I'm T. Rick Jones. I'm the managing editor. And I'm Chris Post, a contributing writer. And I'm Astor Lufkin. I'm also a contributing writer. And this is your daily Star Trek News Roundup for the week of February 11, 2024. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, Paramount um, is has announced they're laying off a whole bunch of people. They're laying off like eight hundred people, um, and this is this is sort of something's going on with with Paramount because they're you know they're they're looking to sell and they're laying people off. Um, so what's uh, what's everybody's take on on the latest with uh, with Paramount and how it will affect Star Trek in the long run? I think well, it, I think it's I think it speaks to the the larger issues with with streaming. Um, nobody has really figured out a way to be as profitable as they would like to be uh, while streaming, it, you know, as a streaming service. Uh, and, and so, uh, I remember when I first started signing up for streaming services, some of them were as as inexpensive as like three dollars and ninety nine cents a month to sign up for. And that price has gone up and up and up and up and up as offerings have kind of dwindled, you know. And and so I don't think anybody really has a good feel for how to how to do it profitably. I mean, my Paramount uh, Paramount Plus subscription has gone up, Netflix has gone up, and my Amazon Prime account now has commercials. Uh, you know, when I signed up and paid a yearly fee for a commercial free streaming service, so I just think it's it's bad bad math for everybody who's trying to be in that in that business yes yeah answer i definitely agree think about amazon if you get an ad blocker on your computer it won't play ads <laughs> oh that's interesting to know <laughs> yeah, yeah. you heard it here I, folks <laughs> yeah. i personally recommend you block origin anyway now, now that i'm back on topic uh yeah i definitely agree Someone texted him and was like, also, that probably accounts for a decent portion of the Discovery cast and crew. Um, <laughs> so that's that could probably be it. But I think they are definitely at least struggling a bit financially, considering they are trying to merge and like talking about merging. And, you know, yeah, I definitely agree with the streaming services thing. I I have like a group of friends that we all pitch together to get like all the streaming services uh, so it's only three dollars a month for me, which is nice. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's way too expensive, and it's not sustainable for most people. Um, yeah, it, it feels to me like maybe a reaction is starting to set in from the deals they made with the strikes to end the strikes. Um, you know, the actors are going to be getting more for the for the streaming services and everything like that. It feels it feels like this was inevitable as soon as as soon as they settled the strikes in the actors paper and i i think the actors deserve what they get and the writers what they what they get for the streaming services but i feel like this is this is a reaction to that um uh whether directly or indirectly yeah i mean uh, and, and you see it in other industries too where uh you know uh, the, in the auto industry, they'll say, oh, we had record profits and, and the shareholders are very happy that there were record profits. And then they'll tell the employees, sorry, there's no money to, to pay you. Uh, so there's a strike, the, the, the workers get more money and then they make cuts because they still want to make those record profits. So, so they're not going to share those profits with, with the workers, not to like sound like a raging communist, but they, they're not going to share the fruit of the profit with the workers. Uh, they're just going to try to make there be more profit, and so they'll do that by by making cuts in other places, uh, so that that profit margin stays nice and nice and fat. Yeah, that makes sense. And so I think that that might be part of it. Part of it might be just if 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 you if your profitability projection is higher when you're looking to sell your company, you'll get more money for the company you're looking to sell. So if you cut eight hundred workers, that in improves your 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 profit projection right. and so that makes the price tag a little uh, you have a little bit more leverage i think and so i think i think it's all tied into probably all those economic factors i don't think it has anything to do 
with they're like, oh, this these these shows all suck, so let's let fire people. I don't think it's that. I think labor is always one of your biggest costs in any in any operation. Labor is is a, is a huge expense because you know people want to live a life, and so. Um, <laughs> So, you know, it's, it's always a way that you can save money is, is, uh, I, I, I work in, in, in the journalism field and I see newsroom after newsroom after newsroom is, is getting cut, 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 cut because labor, labor is a big expense. So yeah. when you're trying to maximize profitability, people are the, people are the target, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. It's the easiest way to save, save a buck. Um, is by yeah. Yeah. unfortunately it, it often has long-term effects on quality uh when you try to get the same amount of work out of significantly fewer people the quality of that work usually goes down and so uh i hope that that doesn't happen with with the paramount productions it's because because they're they're generally pretty good not just the star trek productions but other paramount uh produced content as well is, is generally pretty good and so i hope that this doesn't end up being something that affects the quality. Yeah, they have even they've talked about uh, say if somebody buys Paramount, even like getting rid of the Paramount Plus app and just shopping out the Paramount shows to other um, to other uh, streaming services. Um, I, I heard that rumor, you know, this week or last week. Um, so Which in 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 the network days, that's the way it was, right? Um, you know, Star Trek: The Next Generation was syndicated it was created for distribution and syndication and so uh where i lived i watched it on an abc affiliate but it was not an abc show it was it was syndicated until uh, uh upn the united paramount network came along all paramount content was was syndicated yeah and so it would just be going back to the old model it wouldn't be a new model if they did that right right just for streaming instead of for you know uh actual um tv channels yeah mm -hmm. um so i guess we'll see well you know it's the future we'll see what the future holds in terms of that because it seems to be changing every week something new so yeah. um and i and i hadn't seen where those 800 jobs are going to come from uh you yeah know, i haven't, I, seen, I haven't seen specifically so yeah. I, th I think there's, probably there's a lot to work it out yeah. So, well, yeah, like you said, it, it, time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next thing I want to touch on is uh, South by Southwest. Uh, it's a music festival in um, Austin, Texas. Uh, and it's, it's, 30, it's in its 38th year. It's about to do the 38th annual. And they're having one of the panels they're doing is actually a Star Trek Discovery panel. And... Um, it's going to include Sonequa Martin-Green, uh, who plays Burnham, Doug Jones, who plays Saru, Mary Wiseman, Wilson Cruz, David Ajala, Ajala, Ayala, Ajala, I think, um, and Blue Del Barrio, um, and also uh, co-showrunners and executive producers Alex Kurtzman and Michelle Paradise are going to be there. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Um, you know, the whole the whole discovery. Uh, team, not the whole Discovery team, but a large part of the Discovery team is going to be involved in it. Um, what are you guys feelings about that? I think that'd be a fun thing to go down and see. That is a stocked panel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I I will not be able to go, but I really hope they record it because I will definitely watch it. Um, I'm, in, I'm surprised I got everyone. That's so cool. I know. I know. It's uh, yeah. I I've never been to South by Southwest. I'd love to go sometime, but I just am never able to go. So uh, this will be another one of those times when I can't go, but wish I could. What about you? Yeah, I have I I have some I have some musician friends uh, who who are pretty regular attendees uh, at it, and, and and from from my understanding, you know, it's kind of uh well, Austin is kind of a, a counterculture kind of mecca, and and so. Um, I think the the diverse cast of of Discovery will uh, will fit right in and find a very warm welcome uh, from the uh, from the people uh, uh, that, that uh, typically frequent South by Southwest. Um, you know, it it, it started, at, and I think its focus is primarily music, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but it's right. cool to see them uh, 
uh, including some other uh, uh, artistic expressions, especially uh, television. And it's always cool uh, to see uh, Star Wars or Star Wars. Or Star Trek. I'm sorry. Uh, get it. Get out there. I don't know where that came from. It's too, it's too early in the morning. Uh, but but it's always good to see Star Trek get out in front of um, uh, new new people. You know, um, it, it does sometimes feel like Star Trek is uh, just a part of the fabric of society. But I run into people all the time who have never watched it, uh, or you know, maybe watched some of the original or some of the next generation. Uh, but haven't seen the the broader uh, uh, Star Trek universe uh, that's that's out there. So it's always cool to see it get in front of people. It's just unfortunate that it's happening at the end of Discovery's run <laughs> rather than at the start of it. Yeah. But uh, uh, be, with streaming now, you can go back and you can watch stuff. Uh, you know, it used to be if if you were trying to get into a series, and I remember. Uh, having like bootleg VHS tapes of, of shows, you know, so that somebody could, somebody could watch it. Now you can just like get on streaming and you can find it. Uh, yeah. You know, if nothing else, you can get on Pluto TV and catch old episodes of, yeah. of, of series. So that's always cool, but it's always great. It's always great when, when Star Trek is out there uh, making, making new inroads because I don't think it, it, uh, it, it doesn't have as much presence as, uh, Star Wars or some of the other uh, uh, intellectual properties out there. Uh, there's not as much uh, like I can go to Walmart right now and buy a hundred different Star Wars toys, and I can probably look around and find some some Star Wars T-shirts and things like that just at any Walmart or Target. But you can't go in and find Star Trek stuff uh, very often, so it's it's just not as saturated out into. The general populace and so it's always good when there's a, there's an opportunity uh for them to get out there and reach some people yeah yeah, yeah. um agreed discovery is also premiering the new season at south by southwest yes uh yes and we're gonna, we're gonna touch on the premiere actually oh, that's, awesome. my, that's the next thing on my list so thank you for oh, this awesome thing. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I was like, I was like, that's the same festival, right? Am I, am I messing this up? Because I don't realize that makes sense that the whole cast is there. Well, not the whole cast, but like they're premiering. Of course, they're there. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, a, la a large portion of the cast is there, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so uh, South uh, start uh, Discovery season five, which it will be the final season. Uh, there are a couple of things, a couple of angles to to look at about this um i believe they are premiering the the first episode or or they're they're previewing the first episode there at south by southwest uh but we've finally got we talked about this a little bit last week um we finally have confirmation that april 4th is um the date of the first episode of season five um so so that's good we just got confirmation yesterday from variety um uh, so so great. We know we know when it's going to be. We know it's going to be ten episodes, I believe. So we know when it's going to begin. We know when it's going to end. We know we know what's coming, which is great. Um, the other thing, uh, discovery wise, that happened was Sonequa Martin Green this week commented on her reaction uh, when she first heard that this was going to be the final season. Now, just to review for for those of you who are playing along at home. Um, they filmed season five. It was all done. And then Paramount canceled it. Um, and, uh, so they had to go back and, uh, my understanding originally was that they were refilming the end, but it seems like they, they just, uh, filmed like a coda, like an epilogue kind of thing for the end. Um, and we talked a little bit about this last week. Uh, this week, Sonequa Sine Martin Green, uh, said of her reaction, uh, there was definitely the bittersweetness, but then there was this really powerful sense of peace as well because of what we did, what we created, and what we were all able to be a part of. Um, so that was kind of her reaction to finding out that uh, that it was the end for um, for Star Trek Discovery. So let's examine all of this. Um, what what do you guys think about the the have finally having a date, um, having it be at South by Southwest, and uh, Sonequa's Sinequ reactions. Uh, any thoughts, Chris? Well, I'm or I'm, 
Go ahead, Esther. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm so sad. Discovery is my favorite modern Star Trek, and I. This is the Discovery poster on my wall right here. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I love the characters. I. It's the show that got me into Star Trek. So it. I'm I'm really sad to see it go, but part of me also thinks it's probably run its course. I feel like I I know the characters quite well, and I've grown to love it. But I'm also excited for more new Trek because when this one gets canceled, we're gonna see hopefully Starfleet Academy, uh, like the Starfleet Academy show or the Star Trek Legacy show, which I'm really excited for those. So bittersweet, and I'm sure the ending's gonna be really sweet, and I'm really excited to. Have my popcorn and my tissues so I can cry while I watch it. <laughs> so don't get those mixed up. Oh no, no. <laughs> <laughs> it could end really unfortunately for you. Um, uh, another thing Sonequa said actually was that she was looking forward to maybe doing some crossovers into the Starfleet Academy show or or things like that. So this might not be a, the end of Michael Burnham, which I think is um, is great. Uh, Chris, what about you? Yeah, so uh, you know, I was really excited when there was going to be new, new Trek, uh, and then the first season of Discovery, I, I didn't hate it as much as as uh, some people on the internet really, really hated it. I was, I was intrigued by the characters, but as as I talked about last week, it was a prequel, and it had it had a lot of the problems that I see plague prequels, uh, and and so. Um, you know, the, I, I, I didn't know that it was really necessary to redesign the Klingons again, <laughs> you know, it's just like, leave those poor people alone, <laughs> alone right? But, uh, so, so I, I, but I stuck with it and, and it, 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 it got better. It got a lot better. And, and after the jump to the future, I felt like it really kind of found its, its footing and it, and. And it 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 really kind of settled into its its own voice. I think I think the early seasons, it was trying to to find its voice. It, it was trying to be progressive and and explore social issues like like classic Trek, um, but it was trying to do it in a new way. And so it, there there really was a kind of a shakedown period. Uh, and and so uh, so it really did kind of grow on me. And I've enjoyed uh, the last couple of seasons uh uh pretty uh uh pretty well um and so um so i am a little sad to see it go because i feel like it it there 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 probably were more stories to tell uh i i think it 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 probably you know after about seven seasons it seems like sometimes the star trek shows are running a little a little out of gas and and so um but i i think that maybe we could have got another season or two uh, if if they'd had the opportunity, um, but since it's looking like the Academy show is going to be set in that future time zone, uh, with uh, with probably the Tilly character making a transition over there, it certainly does. <laughs> yeah, I see. Astor's yeah, cheered for that. Uh, so it it uh, it certainly does. I mean, when, when you bring one character over, it certainly does make it make it uh you know the 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 cameo uh door is is definitely open uh there and so i think uh i fans like to see it uh i think writers enjoy doing it uh and and so um you know uh when you see uh not just in star trek but in other spin-off series uh from all sorts of different genres those those main main show characters come and go and and so i think <clears throat> excuse me i think that we're definitely probably not seeing the last of some of these uh some of these bridge crew uh from from discovery yeah i'm personally hoping that we see adira in starfleet academy i think there was that whole episode in season four of discovery where they were like "Ooh, i'm a student now this is so fun that's a really poor plot summary of the episode but that was pretty much what happened <laughs> So I, I really hope we we see them in Starfleet Academy. I, I'd love to see them go to school. I think that'd be good for them. <laughs> it would make sense to send them there because, you know, if you got Tilly over there, it'd be nice to have another character we're familiar with um, in Starfleet Academy and see how they react with a whole different group of group of people. 
um, more their more their own age. So we'll see. It should be good. Uh, there's no time frame on when this Starfleet Academy show is coming out, but we do know it's confirmed. So um, you know, we'll cover it when it happens. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is um, uh, Terry Metalis, uh, who created Star Trek Picard. Um, he talked a little bit about about Picard and um, the the family atmosphere that Gene Roddenberry had created with Star Trek: Next Generation. They wanted to honor that uh, for uh, especially the last season of Star Trek: Picard, which had the Next Generation crew come back, um, and they took it a little farther. Uh, and he also commented on a possible legacy series. Now, this is something we keep hearing about. There is no show called Star Trek Legacy. Um, but one of the one of the things he said was that they haven't been developing it because um, there's I can't remember the exact quote, but it was something like the the resources Paramount's resources are in a lot of other Star Trek right now. Um, which is actually one of the reasons I think they decided to cancel Discovery was, um, in in my theory, my crazy theory, uh, is that they, they're they trying to make room for this other spinoff show that all the fans are saying they want, um, which is everybody's calling Star Trek Legacy. Who knows what it will ultimately be called if it even happens. Um, but he indicated that that was a reason why it's not being developed. Um, uh, what what are your thoughts on um, the family aspects of Picard and uh, and what's going to happen with Legacy moving forward? Well, I think I, uh, definitely the, uh, the 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 family atmosphere certainly is uh, you know it is definitely something that that if you look back to the original series, you know those those characters, uh, you know it's uh, it, in in psychology they call it trauma bonding. Uh, and and so, uh, you know, I grew up uh, around a military base in, in a military family, and and so uh, so trauma bonding is definitely something you, uh, that that you see happen. These these people come from from very diverse backgrounds. They would not have known each other otherwise, but they're in these very intense life and death situations, and so they become kind of forged together like Damascus steel, and and so. Uh, you know, and, and, and so definitely, I think Picard, the, the final season of Picard definitely hearkened back to that. Uh, you know, uh, in the early seasons, Picard was having new adventures with new friends, uh, uh, but, uh, didn't have that shared history. Uh, you know, uh, uh, certainly, um, you know, I, uh, have friends who I I, I was very close with in high school, and then life happened, and we all drifted apart. But when we're back together, those few rare occasions when we're back together, we have kind of a, a shorthand, a language, uh, you know, things that we we said and did in high school that just are part of our DNA now. And and so I think that that uh, uh, the final season, especially those final few episodes of Picard, brought the got the band back together, so to speak. And, um, it was, it was, it was really satisfying as a fan to see that. And I know that there was some criticism about it being fan service, but that's part of what the art is about, is about giving fans stories that they want to see. Uh, huh. you know, why torture your fans, uh, you know, give them, give them what they want. And we certainly, uh, certainly did get that. Um, uh, and, and so, and it was nice to see, that the characters had had lives after inter you know their their time on the enterprise that they weren't just kind of frozen in place uh cuz i think that was one of the things with the original cast when they would show up in in the next movie and it's like why is why is chekhov still a bridge officer 40 years into his starfleet career <laughs> you know like, yeah. like you know like sulu got a ship he got command and like there was a seat they wanted they wanted George Takai to come back and, and be back on the bridge. And he's like, no, I, I have my own command. Remember the last movie? Why would I why would I give up command to come back and be an ops officer? <laughs> you know, and, and so uh, so the, the, the next generation cast, they got to have that existence uh, uh, off of the bridge of the Enterprise. And, and, and so it wasn't like they were just like in mothballs waiting 
uh, to be called back to action. They, 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 so, so we got, we got the group back together, but also got some storytelling that told us that they had lives, you know, Jordy finally had a relationship that worked and, and, and he got to be a dad and have a family. Uh, and, and so, uh, so it was very, very satisfying, uh, uh, to me at least as, as, uh, somebody who's been with the next generation since the encounter at Farpoint. Uh, I was in middle school and uh, I watched the f- first episode uh, and and was was hooked. Uh, and and so I've been with them every every step of the way. All right, and that's that's the news this week. Uh, I just want to, as always, end this by thanking our Patreon supporters. We could not do this without you. Uh, your support support means the world. Um, Patreon support. Uh, helps us to pay for our hosting fees, which uh, seem to go up every once in a while, like everything else. Um, uh, So we, you know, we have a newsletter, we have, um, uh, what else do we have guys? We have, we have a website, we have um, YouTube, uh, YouTube, um, you know, all of this costs money and uh, we are not made of money. And we have fantastic writers uh, like Aster, like Chris, like Alex, like David, um, who, who really, you know, are, are terrific. And I, uh, you know, your support goes to helping me keep them aboard. Um, and so we can, we could really use your help right now. If you support us on Patreon, you'll get this and all our other videos going forward ad free and two days early. So, um, these will come out on Sundays. You'll, um, the YouTubers will get them on, uh, Tuesdays with ads. Um, but if you if you sign up for our Patreon as, for as little as a dollar a month, uh, that'll that'll help us um, enormously. If you haven't gone to our website, uh, I recommend you do it. I, thank you, thank you for watching watching our our stuff on YouTube. But we have a lot of great stuff we we don't even cover uh, in this news story. Uh, Aster does Meme Review Monday, which is a, a fan favorite. Um, I have to say, I get a lot of great feedback for that. And I get some great feedback for top five Fridays, which is Chris's column. Um, and, uh, you know, they're just, they're just fun. They're not necessarily news per se at daily Star Trek news, but they are, they are really fun columns. We also do guest posts this week. We had a fantastic guest post from Derek Tyler Attico, who wrote the autobiography of Captain Cisco. And, um, and it was a really, really great guest post uh and and we get those from time to time at least once a month we have a guest post uh with some great people so um thank you so much uh if you support us um if you don't why aren't you doing that and um and visit our website that's the moral of the whole story (laughs) uh so uh chris post esther lufkin thank you once again for joining me this has been a delight as always Um, and I'll see you next time.